Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Brian Doherty and I am a NetSuite Solutions Consultant for Awesome, a NetSuite Solution Provider based in Dublin. Today I will guide you through NetSuite One World Intercompany Transactions. The objective of this presentation is uh, to help existing NetSuite customers to optimize their use of NetSuite One World. What we will cover today are intercompany transactions. There are four types of transactions that will eliminate upon consolidation within NetSuite One World. Those are intercompany purchase orders, intercompany sales orders, advanced intercompany journals, and intercompany transfer orders. So now we'll pop into NetSuite. And the first type of transaction we'll look at, uh, transactions we'll look at, are intercompany purchase and sales orders. They go in conjunction with each other. So I'm going to go into transactions and I'm going to go to purchases and enter purchase orders. It's important to point out that the transactions between two subsidiaries should always begin with the, the PO or the purchase order. So in this scenario, I'm assuming that the Irish subsidiary purchases from the Netherlands. So I'm going to choose the Awesome Netherlands vendor within the Irish subsidiary. I'm going to add my transactions. And I'm going to add an item. And I'm going to add the quantity that I'm going to purchase. And what I need to do is add a location that these are going to be received into. So I'm going to choose the Dublin location or the Dublin warehouse. When I have all the information added to the purchase order that I require, I'm going to save that purchase order. So the next step is that we create the sales order in the Netherlands. So if we go to transactions and we go to sales and we go to manage intercompany sales orders, we can choose the customer. And in this case, it's going to be Awesome Ireland. And the Awesome Ireland account is within the Netherlands. So what this allows us to do is to direct convert the purchase order directly into a sales order, which means that you don't have to type in the details of the sales order again. We choose the relevant purchase order, and then we generate that sales order. Now, this may take a few moments to do, so we have to be patient and let it run and complete. If there are any issues with the purchase order, uh, or any inconsistencies, when it does complete, we'll get an error message over here telling us exactly what the problem is. So now that process is completed and the sales order has been created. So if I now take a look at the sales order, uh, we can see that this is a sales order created for the Irish entity, but within the Dutch subsidiary. And we also have an intercompany status of paired, which means that this sales order is paired with a purchase order. And that paired purchase order is shown as a hyperlink on the sales order. So all the transactions are linked together. So I can just go to that link and open that up in another tab. And again, if we look at the purchase order now as well, we also can see on the purchase order we have an intercompany status of paired. And we can also we also have a link to the paired sales order. The sales order must be fulfilled before processing the purchase order. And that brings me then to advanced intercompany journals. So this is how we can transfer costs or payments or just uh, create transactions be uh, between subsidiaries. So if I go to transactions, financial, and make advanced intercompany journal entries, I can then um, 
choose the subsidiary that's initiating the transaction. And we'll say it's the Irish entity. And in this case, we're going to uh, use the scenario that the Netherlands is pay, are paying Ireland for goods supplied. So when I go down here, I can choose the uh, intercompany receivables account within the Irish entity. And we're going to be reducing that, so we're going to credit that with the, with the value of the payment. And then in the name column, we will choose the Dutch subsidiary. And then I'll put in the second line, which is the bank line. So we'll put in, we're going to be debiting the bank because Ireland's going to be receiving the money. And then we'll go down to the Dutch side of the transaction. Um, the Dutch on the uh, within the Netherlands, we're going to be uh, reducing the inter accounts payable. So we'll debit the inter accounts payable. The vendor involved is going to be the Irish subsidiary within. Uh, the Dutch entity. And then we can choose the bank account within the Netherlands. So that is our transaction. And if we go over to the right hand side, we can see that both intercompany accounts, the transaction within the intercompany accounts is set to eliminate. And the last transaction we'll take a look at are intercompany transfer orders. So this is really to transfer stock from one subsidiary to the other. So if I go to transactions, inventory, and enter intercompany transfer orders. So I choose the subsidiary that the stock is coming out from, and I'm going to say Ireland. And then we choose the subsidiary it's being transferred to. We'll choose the Netherlands. We choose the location it's coming from within Ireland, and we'll say that is Dublin. And then we enter the transfer to within the Dutch entity, and we'll say that's Amsterdam. Then we enter the item that we're transferring, or items. You can enter multiple items within this form. And then we enter the quantity that we're transferring. And then we have the opportunity to enter a transfer price. The transfer price is stored on the stock item. But if you want to override that transfer price or uh, just to enter a new one, then we can just enter it on the form. And then we can say save. If we go to that item and we go to related records, we can see the transfer order. So we can see it coming out. And then we can see it going back in again into the other entity. That brings me to the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please get in touch at any of the contacts below. And thanks very much for watching. Thank you.